How can you amplify creative potential no matter what stressors threaten to cap your creative energy? As a director, my primary creative outlet is storytelling. And as someone who spends most of their time telling stories, usually in film, television, or sometimes with just a photograph, I'm constantly in search of ways to maximize my creativity. I love what I do. However, with that love also comes an incredible, usually self-induced, pressure to always produce my best work. I've tried many different traditional methods to generate creativity in the past, but a few years ago, I made an interesting discovery about myself and found a catalyst for creativity. And it happened while I was high up in the mountains on the edge of a very precarious, snow-covered cliff. I was in the Swiss Alps, directing a very demanding, first of its kind, interactive television show that had really maxed out my creative capacity. The uh, venture had so many unique new challenges that the production team and I joked through the entire process that we were building the plane as we were flying it. <laughs> Trust me, at times it truly felt that way. I'm part of an amazing team and uh, we did our absolute best utilizing our preparation period. Yet there were a few things creatively I wasn't totally content with. I didn't think the ending we had come up with was as good as it could possibly be. Now, midway through the production, which is when I'm tasked with physically executing and capturing our collective vision, a scene we were about to shoot required a fairly complex stunt. The action started high above a mountain peak with a skydiver in a wingsuit dropping out of a helicopter and flying directly down the slope of a mountain at 200 miles per hour, just skimming the surface of the snow, ice, and rocks. To achieve the shots I desired, the skydiver flying the wingsuit needed to fly directly at the camera which I would be standing directly next to, and then whiz past us within 10 feet of the camera's lens. As often happens in production, just about everything that could go wrong that morning did. Locations had to be changed last minute. Conditions were colder and harsher than we had anticipated. We even lost one of our main camera operators, meaning in addition to everything else my job entailed, I was now gonna need to step in and operate one of the cameras. So there I was, on the edge of a cliff, a little cold, somewhat weathered, and a bit uncertain. Okay, actually, I was very uncertain. I was freezing cold and just plain worn out. Anyone that's worked in film and television knows we constantly have unforeseen challenges, but to date, this was one of the greatest I had encountered. Had I taken on too much? Was I gonna be able to pull it off? My fingers and my toes just began to go numb. I started to feel a bit nervous, restless, and anxious. And although I was focused, I started to realize I was starting to breathe heavier. My heart was beating faster and faster. My mind was racing. Everything I was experiencing, both physically and mentally, had put me right on the edge of my comfort zone. Nonetheless, I finished setting up my camera, then looked down on my video monitors to confirm the remaining cameras and operators were set. I paused for a moment. I took a few deep breaths, and I hit record. I turned on my comm system to address the team as I kind of ran through my last checks with the crew. It was time for the scene to play out one way or another. Um, check. Everybody good to go? Five seconds from drop zone. Final approach. Four seconds. Airspace is clear. Ice Three. We need to go now. Two. He's out. I've got him over the bridge. I've got him. I've got him. Nice Here he comes. <laughs> So the wingsuit pilot had bolted past, and in that moment, I knew I had captured the exact shot I envisioned. Immediately after seeing the safe landing below, still clinging to the cliff edge, I took up my notepad and feverishly started writing. Hands still a little frozen, suddenly ideas just started pouring out as fast, if not faster, than I could write them. I had finally come to what I thought would be the perfect sequence of shots to finish the story I was in the middle of telling. So what had happened? Why had these ideas revealed themselves to me in that moment? Where was this inspiration weeks ago when I was comfy and cozy yet still banging my head against a wall? My heart was still pounding, I was still breathing heavily, and my mind was still racing. And then I realized something. I was excited. At some point, I was able to take what initially felt like fear and uncertainty and reframe it in my mind as excitement. I saw the same problems and challenges in a new way. This sensation didn't happen as a result of feeling relief because things ended up going so well. No. Looking back, I realized from the moment I pressed record, the sensation that took over was excitement. 
When pushing ourselves to the edge of our comfort zone, be it physically or mentally, we're almost always faced with fear. Physiologically, though, there's relatively no difference between how fear and excitement make us feel. However, there is a big difference in how we perform under those feelings. How many of you have ever seen one of those photos at the, uh, at the end of a roller coaster where everybody's going off that last big drop? What do you notice? One thing that's always been interesting to me is you see these faces of just pure elation next to faces of absolute terror. What's going on here that people experiencing the same physical sensations are perceiving the experience so differently? Fear can be healthy. After all, it keeps us alive. But there's a difference between fear that's rational and fear that's irrational. In those moments leading up to hitting that record button, in those long breaths I was taking, I reminded myself that I was prepared for that moment. That preparation diminished the unknown, helping me decipher between concerns that were rational and those that were irrational. When I recalibrated and recognized what I was truly facing, I could more clearly direct my motivational intensity. This equipped me with the means to reframe my perspective and truly get excited. Motivational intensity is how much you'd be willing to either avoid a negative situation, one that garners fear, or approach a positive situation, one that elicits excitement. In other words, it's motivational intensity and the corresponding actions, or inactions, that determine how we view the situation. Now, I was able to harness my motivational intensity by viewing what I was facing as a positive situation that Quite frankly, I was ready for. I had found myself on the absolute edge of my comfort zone, embraced it, got excited about it, and then rather than folding, found I was able to harness and amplify my creativity. I embraced the edge, it amplified my creativity. Embrace the edge, amplify creativity. So how do we do that? Well, first let's take a deeper look at what's happening physiologically. When we're afraid, our adrenaline spikes, our heart rate increases, we may even start breathing heavily, just like I experienced standing on that cliff edge. Now, your body becomes hypervigilant in moments like this, which scientists have shown boosts mental and physical acuity. Fight or flight, right? Well, I wanna suggest that there's another option. Fight, flight, or excite. It's in those moments that we have a chance to frame these physiological truths as fear responses or creative energy. After all, Emotion drives behavior. Fear is an emotion, but so is excitement. Mentally framing what's happening as excitement leads to action, while framing it as fear can be paralyzing. Now, most people think emotions are something you need to manage or control rather than something that can be capitalized upon. If you work to view creative challenges as opportunities rather than dwell on them as terrifying endeavors, you can change your frame, alter your perception, and amplify your potential. You may not always be able to control how your body physically reacts, but you can learn to recognize what you are feeling as the physiological underpinnings of fear or excitement and mentally tell yourself to choose the latter. When it comes to something as elusive as creativity, why not take every emotional advantage you can to maximize your potential, even if that means getting uncomfortable? I recommend you start by testing your limits. The comfort zone isn't always a physical challenge. It can it can be mental. What are some ways to test your limits? It could be as simple as hitting publish on something you've written or singing in front of an audience for the first time. Embrace the edge, amplify creativity. See the edge as an opportunity rather than a threat. The objective isn't to have no fear. The objective is to alter your perceptions and convert that fear into excitement. I was able to do so by telling myself a new story. Really all I was doing was reframing my perspective. Rather than saying to myself, with all these last minute changes, how could this possibly go well? I said, despite some unavoidable last minute changes, I'm glad I came prepared to handle them. Pretty simple, right? Rather than say to myself, I can't believe in addition to everything else I need to manage, now I'm gonna have to operate a camera. I told myself, I'm excited and prepared for the opportunity to get the exact shot that I want. Reframing your thought process from, I have to do this to, I get to do this, transforms what you're doing into an opportunity to unleash creativity. As I put this into practice, I found the more challenging places physically and mentally I pushed myself, the more creative I felt. 
I often have some of my best creative breakthroughs just after I've jumped out of a plane or when I'm diving deep in the sea. I now relish how an extreme opportunity or circumstance can lead to some new creative discovery. I've been lucky enough that this pursuit has taken me all over the world to create in some of my now favorite places. Places like Antarctica, Africa, Iceland and India and Tibet. Now to me, the simple truth is to act and to think creatively, we must live on the edge of what we know and what we do in order to reach our full potential. Now, I realize the edge of everyone's comfort zone is different. It may not be riding a roller coaster or require jumping out of a plane or physically being on the edge of a cliff. It might be auditioning for a band or applying for a new job. Perhaps it's speaking in front of a packed boardroom or even better, approaching a TED talk. But that's also what I found that's so beautiful about this discovery. You may not always require extreme circumstances. Whatever it may be, I'd wager that you can find something in your life that makes you uncomfortable and use that to conjure some motivational intensity you can channel toward your creative endeavor. As I think back on the things I felt in those moments on that cliff edge, the creative challenges, the physical challenges, it's easy to think about how uncertain and uncomfortable it initially felt. However, what I remember most of all is the exhilaration and joy of peer creation when I finally shifted my perspective and told myself a new story when the, uh, the uncertain and the uncomfortable became exciting. Now, if anyone is wondering what a person flying a wingsuit sounds like, or let's say when they're flying directly at you, well, it sounds just like a rocket flying through the sky, which essentially is exactly what they are. Down the right, he's coming right at us. To your right, to your right. Wide now, full wide. So what am I proposing? That you write your next book on the edge of a cliff? Well, maybe. More so, I'm challenging you to find your proverbial cliff and get excited about embracing that edge. So like me, you just might find the key to amplifying your creative potential. Thank you.